Today, let's work with some fundamentals, right hand and left hand fundamentals. Let's start with the left hand first. Many of you know the fundamental fingering, but I want to illustrate and show actually physically how it looks and how we get it. Okay? We're talking about using this finger for our first note, this finger, two for our second note, and then finger four for the next note. Now the biggest trick is, is if you'll notice, because of this finger here, we got the space here. And that's you know, about right. But we need that space in here and we don't have a finger. So if we're not careful, this out of tune, we need to kick that little bugger up as though there's a finger in there. So the basic position looks like this. Now what's difficult when you first start practicing is it's hard to hear just in those chromatics if it's in tune or not. That's the most difficult part to hear. So I always often, I often, I always start with working on the fifth. Here's a B flat, and here's that fifth. Ooh. There it is. See how that spread? Now look at here, I've got a little bit too much space here compared to that, so it needs to be a little more like that. Now we weren't playing that note in between, you couldn't hear it, but when we played that pitch, I need about that same distance there, see? So let me just show you a little bit of an exercise here. I know, for you beginners, how difficult that can be. Now, I'm not talking about playing the notes, but I'm talking about good hand position without shifting around, without wiggling between those two different fifths. So we want to have our fingers curved, number one. We want them curved down here, not this flat stuff like this. On the tips of the fingers curved. We want to have some space in between our palm and the base. We don't want to grab it. We want to have some space. That requires that we use the thumb back about the middle of the fingerboard, not up here. Back about the middle of the fingerboard, back in here, like this, so that we end up with the space here. And that's just difficult to do at first, I know. A big part of learning the double bass is building strength in muscles and areas that you've, never, you've not done before and practicing enough so that we create endurance. When, you're, don't have, when you don't have that physical strength, immediately your hand position goes bad and you lose intonation. Um, there are some players who jump around and they can play it in tune, but not very many people, and we sure don't want to practice thinking about and working on uh, you know, the exception to the rule. No, we want to do it. We want to practice correctly. So again, here's our fifth. Let's get them in tune. Next one. Now you notice I didn't move anywhere like this. I just transposed this position to there. So think of it this way. If I've got this note in tune and this note in tune, well, they're in tune on the next two strings, aren't they? As long as I don't change the relative distance here. And the goal is to keep them real close. It's always economy of motion. Not this. Whoa, I've lost, I've sort of got my position, but I've lost a little bit of touch with it. Stay as close as possible. Next string. Why don't you get your bass out and play with me? getting tired already. It's hard holding things. It's a lot easier to jump around. But when you're jumping around, it actually takes more energy and strength. Now, until you get the, the, a, a strongness in your hand and your wrist and all the fingers here, it'll seem like it's easier because you're releasing the pressure. But once you build the strength in your hands, and it takes quite a bit of practice, then you can play better and it's actually easier because you can move less.
Have you ever noticed when you watch a, a double bass player who's a really great player, you often can't tell what pitches he's playing? That's because he's not doing this. You can't see he's doing this. I just did this. <laughs> Let's practice that same little exercise again. B flat, F. Up a string. Maintain the hand position, the posture. Got our fingers curved. We got the thumb about in the middle of the neck. That creates that space between the palm of the hand and the base. Now let's talk about practicing this. As I mentioned, you want to create the strength and the endurance, and that only comes through repetition. So you want to set little goals, play little games with yourself. Don't worry about a metronome right now. Just feel it, feel a good tempo, but let's do it four times through nonstop. One, two, by the way, play with me. One, two, three, four. Just like when you're working out at the gym, you have to have repetitions and you have to set limits, but you do have to push yourself and do it. Otherwise, there won't, you know, you just, you won't, you, there will be no gain. Simple as that. No uh, gain without a little bit of pain. Now, if that's easy for you and you can do it, great. We'll set a set a goal to do it eight times through. Let's do that. That's going to take a little bit of time, but let's do that together now and see how that feels. Okay, eight times through it. Here we go. Play with me. One, two, three, four. I believe that was eight. If it wasn't, you be sure and do eight. Um, Again, that's how we need to create strength. Real simple, solid exercises. Now, I know the challenges. In the beginning, you get tired and you want to do this kind of thing, and then this kind of thing, and then this, oh, no, 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 don't do that. Don't allow yourself to create and play with bad, play badly with bad posture and create bad habits. It just will not make it. You have to practice in an orderly fashion and, and slow enough and with enough small repetitions that you begin to build strength. A couple more things I uh, thought about there. Be sure and keep the elbow off the base. None of this kind of stuff. No, keep the elbow up. Basically, it's just, you know, it's an extension. It goes here. It doesn't go down. doesn't go up in the air. Just kind of straight across there. That'll help you maintain that distance in here, too. Okay? 
Got the idea? Let's go to some uh, right-hand pizzicato now. Now let's look at pizzicato. Plucking with the right hand. A jazz pizzicato. Classical is quite different. We'll get into that later. Here we go. Let's look at the finger now. We're going to work with this part of the, the meat of the finger across here. We're going to lay the finger on the string like that, pull it. Let's don't release it at the moment. Let's just pull it. I'm not talking about this, and we really don't have to get up here like this, but let's sort of curve it and get that meat chunk on it. Watch, I'm going to pull a couple more times. Now I'm going to pull and release. And that's the stroke. Pull, release. Pull, release. I've got my thumb anchored back here. Some people sort of anchor it in different spots, but this is a traditional. By the way, I'm not talking about a soloistic kind of thing like this that Niels Haining or Gomez or some people like that play with. I'm talking about a fundamental attack, a sort of meat on the string that you would hear from Ray Brown or Paul Chambers or Ron Carter or Chris McBride, that kind of a thing. Watch again. Pull, release, pull, release. Not hit. No, that'll get you all sorts of blisters and, a, and pain. Some people think that's like a badge of honor. No, we don't need all those blisters. Let's play it together. Play it with me. D string. Pull. Let's pull and don't release. Oh, let's try that. D string. Pull and release. a bunch of funny stuff with your wrist, sort of a uh, kind of thing like this. There's a bunch of bad education that says do all sorts of funny things up here. No, no, no. Just pull and release. Are you playing along with me? The A string. Notice there's no string to land on. I'm basically pulling against my own thumb there and you know, sort of the fingerboard. I have my thumb anchored here and I'm pulling and stopping, landing there. Be careful you don't get a, a big bang sound. Sometimes that's an effect, which is nice, but in general, we just want the same, atta same attack and sound we have on the other strings. Let's do it now in a rhythm. Let's do eight pull and release attacks on each string. Ready? One, two, three, quarter notes. You notice how every once in a while you hear some rattling up here? I have the bass set up just low enough that I can get some of that growling noise, and I like that. Now, where you place the hand on the fingerboard itself, up and down, that makes a difference. Sometimes it's, it's kind of mushy up here, although some people like that sound. You get down a little bit too far, and it sounds sort of brittle and maybe a little too pointed attacked. There's a sweet spot. If your fingerboard is a normal length, and on some bases it isn't, that's usually right about the end of the fingerboard. Not quite here, but back your finger up a little above. Sort of like about that much above the end of the fingerboard. You can feel that spot where it's like, here it's here it's kind of it's kind of cool here, but it's a little bit mushy, a little floppy. You go, oh there it is, just like in a tennis racket, that sweet spot. Let's go back to our same exercise now, okay? Let's do eight attacks again, a little faster. A one, two, a three, a four.
little easier so it doesn't rattle quite so much. Cool, let's go back. D string. Notice we're not hitting the string. Pull and release. Now the G string. Here's a little example of that. You can focus on watching my right hand, but I'll play a little bit of blues line. Here we go. Watch this right hand. A one, two, three, four. Got the idea? It's really cool when you start getting that warm, fat, fluffy sound that everybody likes it. It's fun. Uh, at school, I'll be working with a double bass student in the room here, and I'll just say, check this out. And we open the door just to the hallway, and we start playing. I swear, in 90 seconds, people are all lined up around the door going, yeah, man. I've often said uh, that uh, if you go in a club situation, here's a jazz group, if the bass player's grooving, Everybody in the room wants to play the big bass. There's just a feeling and a sound to it. And most of it comes from that. Bang, bang, that stuff right there. Have some fun with this.